On August the 28th, 1917, shortly after the commissioning of Yamashiro, with Issei nearing completion, Hyuga well underway, and World War I in its third year, Japan began its next class of battleship. This was the first of the two 33,800-ton Nagato class. For fiscal reasons, it wasn't until almost a year later that her sister was started. More on that in a bit. The main reasoning for these two was the upgunning taking place in Japan's most likely enemy, the United States. America had already held hearings on and authorized the 16-inch gunned Colorado class, even though due to wartime priorities being on merchants and destroyers, they wouldn't be completed until later. Japan's answer was the 16.1-inch 45 caliber gun. Okay, folks, this is where it's going to get ugly. In the late teens, Japan started switching over to the metric system. As a result, in most cases, their equipment was measured in metric. For those of us used to the inch, the only advice I can offer is that one inch equals about 25.33 millimeters. So, since they were designing their equipment using metric, in reality, this wasn't a 16.1 inch gun, it was a 410 millimeter or 41 centimeter gun. Still lacking the technical capacity to design large guns themselves, these guns were basically an enlarged version of the 14-inch gun of previous battleships. The larger and thus heavier shell meant their guns could penetrate thicker armor and had more capacity. This meant the two midship turrets of the previous classes could be discarded, which improved structural strength while still keeping about the same weight of fire. This meant the forecastle deck could again run all the way to turret 3, improving dryness. As good as these two were individually, in fact, aside from Hood, they were the fastest battleships in the world at the time of their introduction, there was only two of them. This even as most other powers were embarking on massive construction programs, the U.S. in particular. Following the four Colorados, the U.S. planned the six Lexington-class battle cruisers with eight 16-inch guns and 33 knots, if not armor. More serious was the six heavily armored South Dakotas with 12 16-inch 50 caliber guns. Japan's version was the 888 program, a series of eight battleships and eight battle cruisers, the later really being more of fast battleships than true battle cruisers, to be built in eight years. The Nagatos were to be the first pair of battleships. They were to be followed by the two Kagas which would have been essentially enlarged Nagatos with a fifth twin 410 millimeter turret. These would be followed by the four 47,500 ton ships of the unnamed number 13 class, which would carry four twin 460 millimeter guns. On the battlecruiser side would be the four ships of the Amagi class, followed by the four ships of the Key class, all carrying 10 410 millimeter guns in five twin turrets and displacing around 40,000 tons. Like other countries, there was only one stumbling block to this ambitious plan, economics. Most countries were too far in debt as a result of World War I to see their construction plans through. The US, on the other hand, had the money, but not the political will to spend it. As you might have guessed from the year-long delays in funding Yamashiro and Mutsu, for Japan, the problem was one of scale. Compared to other major naval powers, Japan's industrial and economic ability was much smaller, making it totally out of scope with its ambitions. Even with the Navy consuming about 40% of the nation's GDP, it could only fund about one and a half capital ships per year. Even at that staggering rate, Mutsu was only paid for by supplementing her funding with donations from school children, making her something of a national treasure. Knowing then that they were straining to fund four battle cruisers and six battleships in eight years, I'll let you decide on the feasibility of paying for six more battleships and eight more battle cruisers, all larger than their predecessors, in the same amount of time. Fortunately for Japan, in the early 20s, along came the Washington Conference. 
At a stroke, Japan could cancel these economically crippling construction plans without dishonorably appearing weak. Yes, many in the military were unhappy about being limited to two-thirds the size of the U.S., but as with many who complained about spending cutbacks, they didn't have the dubious honor of writing the checks. The only caveat was that originally the treaty called for the canceling of Mutsu. With the thought of her being a national treasure due to her funding in the back of their mind, the Japanese delegation argued that she had already been completed and as such wasn't under construction. With the threat of the conference breaking down and the other powers relenting, Japan was allowed to keep her in exchange for the U.S. being allowed to finish two more of the Colorados and the British being allowed to build two new 16-inch gun ships later. These were eventually realized as the two ships of the Nelson class. Nagato was started August 28, 1917 and completed November 25, 1920. Mutsu was started June 1, 1918 and completed October 24, 1921. Main armament was eight 410mm 45 caliber guns in four twin individually sleeved turrets two forward and two aft. Each mount weighed 1,004 tons and had a maximum elevation of 30 degrees which came out to a range of about 16 miles. Realistic rate of fire was about two rounds per minute per gun. Originally the loading angle was up to 20 degrees but this was mechanically tricky so realistically it was at 3 degrees. Recoil was about 6 feet. Propellant was in four 483-pound bags. 90 rounds were carried per gun. Muzzle velocity was about 2,600 feet per second. By World War II, they carried three main types of rounds. The first was a 2,249-pound armor-piercing round with a 32.8-pound bursting charge. The second was a 2,069-pound high-explosive or contact round with a 97.9-pound bursting charge. The third was the 2,072-pound Sanshikiden incinerary shrapnel anti-aircraft shotgun round. Secondary armament was 20 of the 5.5-inch 50 caliber guns, still in casemates, all midship. 14 were built into the forecastle deck with one pair aside turret 2, the second pair aside the conning tower, the third pair aside the rear legs of the forward tower, the fourth pair aside the forward funnel, the fifth pair aside and between the two funnels, the sixth pair was further back aside the forward legs of the rear tripod, and the seventh pair was aside the rear legs of the rear tripod. The remaining six guns were essentially built into the superstructure, with the Kate's mates above and between the second and third pair, the third and fourth pair, and the fourth and fifth pair. Territory armament was four 3-inch 40 caliber anti-aircraft guns in Siegel open mounts midship, two on either side. Eight 21-inch torpedo tubes rounded out the main armament, with four underwater and four above. The submerged tubes were in four single mounts, two on each side, with one tube being beyond each end of the armored citadel. The above water tubes were on the upper deck aside the rear funnel. Propulsion was provided by 21 boilers venting to two funnels. Fifteen of them were oil fired while the other six burned coal. These provided steam to four turbines which generated 80,000 horsepower. Each turbine directly drove one of the four propellers for a top speed of 26 knots. There was one rudder. Protection was still of the incremental type. The main belt, which straddled the water line, was 12 inches thinning to 8 inches at the top and stretching from turret 1 to turret 4 with 13 inch bulkheads forming the ends of the armored citadel. In front of turret 1, it reduced to 8 inches and then 4 inches near the bow. Behind turret 4, it reduced to 8 inches besides the steering gear and then to 4 inches near the stern. Below the belt, it slimmed to 6 inches. Below that, 3 inches bowed inward and then downward all the way to the top of the double bottom.
Total deck armor was a combined 6 inches spread across 3 decks, with the main deck being 1 inch, the second deck being an inch, and the third deck being 3.9 inches. The 3.9 inch armored deck sat just above the waterline and ran perpendicular to the belt. At the sides, it slimmed to 3 inches and sloped downward to meet where the 6 inch bottom of the belt reduced to 3 inches and began bowing inwards. Barbette armor was up to 12 inches. Turret armor was 11 and 3 quarter inches on the front, 8 and 3 quarter inches on the sides, and up to 5 and 3 quarter inches on the roofs. An armored bulkhead ran down the middle of each turret to separate each gun. Casemate armor was only 1 inch. Conning tower armor was up to 14 and a half inches on the sides. The engineering spaces were divided into three rooms of five oil boilers sitted longwise side by side. Behind them was two widthwise rooms which each housed three coal burning boilers. Behind them was the engine room housing the two turbines that ran the outer shafts. Behind it was the engine room with the two turbines that ran the inner shafts. They were double bottomed. Modifications were many, as was the case with most battleships that survived the Washington Treaty. In 1922, the distinctive thumbnail smoke deflector was fitted. During a late 1924 through 1925 overhaul, their forward funnel was cranked back almost to the rear funnel in a further effort to keep smoke out of the tower, which gained more and more platforms to support ever longer range gunfire. In late 1925, an experimental flying off platform was fitted to Nagato's number two turret. In early 1932, the four three inch anti aircraft guns were replaced by eight of the then new five inch 40 caliber anti aircraft guns in four twin mounts, two on either side midship. Only a few months later, in mid 1932, a crane and catapult were fitted behind the rear tower for spotter float planes. From April 1, 1939 to January 31, 1936, Nagato began her rebuild, with Mutsu getting the same from September 5, 1934 to September 30, 1936. All four main turrets were replaced with improved ones from ships that were canceled by the Washington Treaty. These turrets were roomier and had an increased elevation of 43 degrees, which raised maximum range to 24 miles. They also had more armor. Turret armor increased to 460 millimeters on the front, 280 millimeters on the sides, and up to 250 millimeters on the roof. Barbette armor was also increased to 460 millimeters. Deck armor was increased to a combined 190 millimeters. The forwardmost pair of 5.5 inch guns were removed as being too wet and the casemates were plated over. The 18 remaining secondaries had their maximum elevation increased to 35 degrees. To improve hydrodynamics, the stern was lengthened 25 feet and they received a clipper bow. To give them a credible TDS and restore lost buoyancy, bulges were added that ran from turret 1 to turret 4. This was at the perfectly acceptable expense of removing all of the torpedo tubes. The forward mast was reconstructed into the pagoda structure by removing the forward funnel. This in turn, as with other ships, was only possible by re-engining. All of their old boilers were removed and replaced with four large, each in its own compartment, and six smaller, still three in two compartment, oil burning ones. These provided steam to four new, more powerful turbines that produced 82,000 horsepower. With more power and better hydrodynamics against the increased displacement of 39,120 tons meant speed only dropped marginally to about 25 knots. Except for more light and medium anti-aircraft, very little major work was done to them up till and during the war. The most notable thing was the adding of crushing tubing to the TDS in 1941. More on that whenever I get to the Italian Navy. In May of 1943, Nagato received radar, while apparently Mutsu never got it. Following the Battle of the Philippine Sea, in late June, early July 1944, Nagato landed another pair of secondaries for more light and medium anti-aircraft. 
in 1945, another pair of twin 5-inch 40 caliber heavy anti-aircraft mounts were fitted. All of the portholes were welded shut and all but the two rear pair of secondaries were removed. Of course, by then, with virtually no fuel or air cover, she was little more than a stationary floating anti-aircraft hulk. Nagato and Mutsu were at port in Japan on December 7, 1941. With the exception of the Battle of Midway, they mostly stayed there for the first year and a half of the war, awaiting the expected great decisive battle. At noon on June 8, 1943, while in port, Mutsu's number three magazine exploded, blowing the ship in half. The forward three quarters capsized to starboard until the pagoda buried itself in the mud. The rear quarter upended and sank vertically the next day. At a stroke, the ship Japan had allowed the U.S. and British to have Colorado, West Virginia, Nelson, and Rodney for at, was gone, having never fired on the enemy. Even worse, going down with her were 100 carrier pilot cadets and their 40 instructors who had been visiting her. This, even as Japan was trying desperately to replace the hundreds of carrier pilots it had lost the previous year. Nagato remained in Japan another few months until mid-August 1943 when, along with other ships, she loaded troops and supplies, then sailed for truck, arriving later that month. Only sailing in mid-October 1943 in a failed attempt to intercept the U.S. carrier raids on Wake, she mostly stayed at truck. At the start of February 1944, she left truck and transferred to the East Indies along with most of the other heavy surface ships where they could be closer to their oil supplies and mostly away from American carriers and subs. Arriving near the end of the month, she mostly guarded the pier. In mid-June 1944, Nagato and most of the rest of the surface fleet sailed east and took part in the Battle of the Philippine Sea where she suffered no serious damage, then returned to Japan near the end of the month for repairs and refit. Arriving back at the East Indies in mid-July 1944, she stayed there until mid-October 1944 when she sailed for the Battle of Leyte Gulf. At the Battle of the Sibuan Sea, she suffered several near misses and two bomb hits. One caused only minor damage, knocking out a pair of casemated guns and one of the 5-inch anti-aircraft mounts. The other knocked out the air intake to one of the boiler rooms, temporarily reducing her speed as smoke filled the room. The next day, at the Battle of Samar, she was hit by two more bombs that caused minor damage to her bow. Having lost the battle, she returned to the East Indies at the end of the month. Half a month later, in mid-November, still with most of the heavy surface ships, she left the East Indies and returned to Japan, arriving near the end of the month for repairs and upgrades. By mid-February 1945, without fuel or air support, she was effectively reduced to a floating anti-aircraft platform being damaged several times by numerous air attacks during the remaining of the war. Post-war, Nagato was the only Japanese battleship still above water and was taken over by the U.S. The American technical groups sent to study her sophistication post-war were unimpressed. Even worse, like most other Japanese ships, she was a rundown, dilapidated mess, nearly in wreckage state. In March of 1946, a skeleton American crew tried to sail her to the Marshall Islands along with the cruiser Sakawa. This didn't go well, and between only two, boil to two outboard propellers really working, her hull leaking, which caused her to take on water. With three of eight boilers initially working, she finally had to be towed to Inuitic. The end came for Nagato at Bikini, where she survived the airdropped Test Able but the underwater test baker mortally wounded her. On July 29, 1946, she rolled over and sunk, coming to rest upside down, her pagoda breaking off as she hit bottom.